Hello, welcome back to Project 63 here with Steve. Hi there. Last time Steve refurbished this radius arm, well both, <laughs> this time we're going to put them all back together with all the cool fancy bits and some of the original parts. So keep watching and we'll show you how it's done. So Steve, here's one that you've made earlier. Here's one we built earlier. Do you want to run through some of the components that we're going to be playing with today? Here we have a hub, all clean, ready to build. That was an original one, wasn't it? This was the original one off the car, yes. So we've now bought some longer studs, wheel studs, to take up for the uh, inbuilt spacer on the mini fin. These are a bit wider than the standard drums. That's right, and they've also got the fins on. Taper roller, rib, wheel bearings. We've gone for genuine ones there as well. Yeah, not the cheap aftermarket ones. And on this side, Stephen, what do we have over this side? Uh, we've got some Mintex brake shoes. We've got the original back plates, which you managed to blast off and paint. Uh, grit blasted these, painted them up. They've come up really well, actually. They were in mint condition. Sometimes it's nice to use the original bits when you can, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. We're obviously going to fit new Goodrich brake hoses here and new metal pipes where needed. And I've got a fancy tool as well. Super expensive, was, was that about five pounds on eBay? Five pound on eBay for bending the actual pipe. It just makes a nice curve in it. I mean, you as can you do can it. see on this one. Yeah, you can do it by hand, but it looks cool, doesn't it? Yeah. Might as well do it properly. Bits over here, normal bits, wheel cylinders, um, springs, the normal rebuild kit, and this bracket here, which is non-standard, and that's for the anti-roll bar kit. Always that's recommends a rear anti-roll bar kit on a fast road mini. It just sharpens up the handle in no end, reduces the body roll, and uh, reduces understeer. Exactly. So that's the way to go for a fast road mini. So, should we stop chatting and get, get on, on with, with it? Build. We're going to start with the hubs first, going to put the studs in, wheel bearings, and go from there. Okay, so we start off then, we're going to put the wheel bearing tape a roller wheel bearing into the refurbished rear hub. You've got the outer race, and then you've got the, the inner section with the taper roller bearing on. So that needs to go inwards with the spacer pointing in. So obviously it fits together like that. You need to press the outer race in. We're quite lucky in that we've got a hydraulic press. It makes it so much easier. I mean, you can probably do this if you've got a big bench vise. Always find a bit of oil just on there, just not loads, but just everything's better with lubrication. And then you need some kind of socket or bar or press tool. We've got this, I think it's the end of a, a drive shaft rig. Yes, yeah, just make sure it's square and you'll see gradually push her in. You just got to be really careful because these hydraulic presses are so strong. Okay, needs to go in a little bit more yet, but slowly, slowly catch your monkey. There you go. Spin it around, just make sure it's really clean inside there. Oil her up. Remember, taper outwards. If you just get it started, maybe just pull it out, make sure it's going in square. Oh, that's a good noise. I use Torco grease, but this comes with it, so we'll, we'll go with, with some of that. Just have to make sure it's all, they're all loaded up. And you basically just want to press it into them. You don't need to fill it with grease because it just pump it all out past the seals. Yeah, something like that. It's probably a scientific way to do it, but this works, so, so we'll go with it. There you go, just make sure it's all the way around. Just put it around there as well. That's it really. Drop her in, space her inwards. Like that. And then the final bit on the back is to put the grease seal in. So it goes inwards on this particular bearing. Whether you've got your, your bench vise or your, your press. 36 mil. 
That'll do. Let's put that on there as well. Just get it um, even all the way around. That'll do. Okay, so wheel studs. I've seen people use big old club hammers and just smack them in. It's probably not the best way to do it. I mean, you can just lightly tap them into to there to get them started. Okay, well that's the hub sorted now, studs are in, we've just loaded the bearings in and loaded those up with grease on both sides, put the oil seal in, so that's good to be fitted. So here's the back plate, we've refinished it. So first job is put the adjuster in. We'll just put a little dab of copper slip on there. We will load it in that away. Okay, so we'll just put the mole grips on the back of the adjuster and then we'll just wind him in. There we go, that's right in now, as far as we need it for the time being. Okay, we're now going to try the wheel cylinder on here. Uh, the last one we built up, it wouldn't actually fit between the two pieces just here, so we'll just try it. Let's just pop the bleed nipple out first. You'll notice this old back plate hasn't got the hole for the um, split pin. Bleed nipples out, split pins out, on we go, and you'll see it won't actually go in between the two notches there. So we just need to relieve that with a file. I'm going to relieve it just here on both sides. And the other side as well. Nearly there, just needs a smidgen more. This may be because this is an original back plate. The new back plates, I think, have the hole for the split pin to drop into, but these older ones have these recesses here to locate it. So let's just have a look now. Ah, there we go. So it's in now. Won't wobble. We just need to put the clip on the back. Oops, just forgot to put the gasket on. We'll just pop that on first. So gasket on. Now the back plate. Right, we'll try and do it this way. There we go. So that's in place now. We'll now put the bleed nipple back in. There we go. So that's got those two items on. Right, so now we're going to put the back plate onto the radius arm with the, uh, the bracket for the anti-roll bar and the handbrake cable. So let's have a look where we go from there. So here's the back plate now. Drop that down onto there, nice snug fit. Okay, so on this side, we don't need any of the bracketry. We're just gonna pop a bolt in through there. This is the handbrake bracket, which goes on like so. Put another washer on, and then the nylock nut. Okay, so what we've done now is we've just turned the radius arm round in the vise. We're going to put the anti-roll bar bracket on, which is this little baby. And this goes on like so. You put the bolt through first, then through the handbrake cable bracket and through into there. The next bolt goes through but you need a spacer to go behind it to take up for the thickness of the handbrake bracket. So the spacer goes behind there like so. And through the bracket. Now we just need to put the nuts on the other side. One, two. You can do this on the car, but be very, very awkward because lying on your back upside down, it's, uh, it's a little bit awkward. So would suggest if you've, got the radio, if you've got the subframe out, now would be the time to put these components on if you're going to do it. So there we go. That's all of those locked up now. Give that one more. There we go. So now you'll see we've got the 
bracket on for the handbrake cable and this is the bracket that holds the anti-roll bar and we'll show you the anti-roll bar fitting when we've fitted the actual radius arms to the car um, but next off we're just going to spin it round and we're going to put the brake shoes in put the, um, the rear drum on and then we're ready to assemble the subframe together we're just going to pop the little gator on which is the uh, the one that goes on here for the handbrake mechanism to come through so it's a little bit awkward to get on this is so flick, flick. and one more there we go so that's in place so the handbrake mechanism goes down through there okay first job is obviously to pop these little quadrants back in these are the adjustable quadrants that go in there we'll just pop a little bit of uh, a slip on these before we put them in don't want too much because if it gets hot it will run out so just enough to stop them seizing okay so they're in okay we're back again after a week or so but we've been rather busy so here we go so we're going to put the brake shoes in now first thing you must remember is the handbrake levers are handed so you must get them in the right way around this is the correct one obviously if you put this one in it will be incorrect because the offset's on the wrong side. So remember, get the right one in the right side. Okay, next job. Again, same thing. The brake shoes must go in the right way round. So the one on this side has the cut out here. The one on this side, the cut out at the bottom. So those go on like so. Springs, this one has the clearance for the uh, handbrake mechanism. The other one doesn't. So we'll pop those on. One, two, one under there. One under there. Now we've just got to flick them on into place. One down, so. And over the adjuster. And the other one down this side. And then this one over the adjuster there so there you go that's all in place now ready for the handbrake we've already assembled the hub with the taper roller bearings and the studs all greased up ready to go so we'll pop that on there we go the large washer and the nuts don't forget on the left hand side of the car near side in the UK the nut is left hand and this is the left hand side so Okay, now we're not going to torque this up at the moment. We're going to tighten it up and then we're going to put it on the car. That'll be enough for now. Okay, we'll put the split pin in for now to stop us forgetting and we'll just bend it over loosely. But uh, this is not the finished item. So just bend that back round. There we go. Pop hub cap on. And just a little tap down. Now on the rears, we're going to put the finned brake drums on with the spacer in. So we'll just pop one of these on. Don't forget, line the holes up with the holes in the hub for the screws to hold it in place. Okay, so there we go, that's on. Okay, there's that on. We have a new brake hose. One end's got to go obviously into the cylinder. The other end's got to go up here onto the flexible hose which goes back into the subframe so the best thing is going to be to pop the flexible hose one on first and then we can see where this is going to be bent to these are the genuine goodrich hoses that we sell here in the shop so anybody needs goodrich hoses braking wise we've got full range in stock so we just pop that off just pop a little bit of copper slip on here just in case you want to take it off at any point in time just makes life easy if it ever wants to come off. We'll just get a spanner now and tighten that one up. Doesn't need to be too tight, it's only just to hold it in place. Right, we're now going to bend the pipe. We've got a sample radius arm here that we've already done one on. And Stephen's just got the jig to do the bending now, okay? All right, so we want a 90 on that one. Okay. So it just gives a nice even curve until you get to 90. Not the most accurate tool, but for the cost of it, 
pretty good. Very good. Relying on Stephen's expertise at pipe bending now. Well, yeah. As you see. No pressure, right? There's only, there's only two bends in this, isn't there? Can't so really do it wrong, as long as he bends. You can do it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, just there. There we go, okay. So, got a mark. You got the, the marker. Zero, zero. And now like Stephen's that. going to take it round to whereabouts? Seamless. We're going to go round to 60. Okay, go for 60. 45. I would say that's somewhere near 60. Let's try it. Let's have a look, see how good he is. Oh, no, I'm perfect. I mean, you can tweak it a little bit afterwards. It's not bad. I mean, this is the easier one to do, isn't it? So we can practice on the radius arm before we do all the ones at the front. Now we've got the brake pipe in situ, we'll just spanner these up. We've got a proper brake pipe spanner here, so there we go. We'll just lean on that one a touch. Make sure it's seat in, there we go. And then this one. Put plenty on this, just make sure that the nipple is biting into the Bundy tubing. So there we go. That's that radius arm complete now then. So we're ready to actually put that into the subframe, which we'll do on the next video. So there we go. We've now completely rebuilt the radius arms, put some nice upgrades on the Goodrich hoses, taper roller bearings, aluminium drums, and they're ready to go back into the subframe now. Thanks all for watching and join us soon for the next episode on Project 63.